I don't know about you guys, but December has completely snuck up on me this year. And while there's not a lot going on in the way of planting in my Ohio garden right now, there is still a fair amount of work to be done. So today I thought I would share with you what I am doing in my zone six Ohio garden during the months of November and December. Now you've probably already guessed one of the big things that I'm doing during this time of the year in my garden, and that is garden cleanup. Everyone does it, everyone has their own ways to do it, but I have a couple of things that I do specifically to help build and improve the soil for next spring. When I'm tackling garden cleanup, I'm actually leaving as much residue in the garden as possible. I try to leave most of my plants in the garden after harvesting, just allowing the leftover leaves and plant material to break down and add to the soil. Now, the exception to that is if it is plants that have extremely woody stems that take a really long time to break down, I'll throw those either on my compost or in my hugel culture pile. The other exception is any plants that are diseased. So tomatoes are a key one for me. My tomatoes often have blight. So I cut those plants off and dispose of them in a completely separate area. Those don't even go in my compost pile. But otherwise, things like broccoli, cauliflower, leafy greens, green beans, things that have fleshy stems and a lot of foliage, I'll just chop and drop those just like I would a cover crop and let them lay on the soil surface for the winter. The other thing that I do is I leave the roots in the soil. So again, with big woody plants like sunflowers and peppers, I will just chop my plants off at the soil line or a little above and let those roots in the soil. And leaving those roots in the ground to break down through the winter does a lot of good. It helps aerate the soil, it helps add rotting organic matter, it helps feed the soil microbes. So I always try to leave roots in place if I can. The next big thing for me, and you may have heard me harp on this before, is covering the soil. No matter what, I always want to make sure that my soil is covered. So my first line of defense is to get a fall cover crop planted. If I can't get that done, I will chop my garden crop and leave that laying on the soil surface. And if I can't do that, or if it just does not provide enough matter to cover the entire surface, my go-to is mulching everything with a chopped leaf mulch. Keeping the soil covered helps in a multitude of ways. I'm suppressing those late season weeds that wanna pop up. I'm keeping the soil protected from things like heavy rain or wind erosion. And as the leaf mulch breaks down, that's another way to help add organic matter to the soil. Now, if you do this, I think you will find, like I have, that when you go to plant in the spring, you can pull back whatever residue is left and the soil underneath is so much nicer than anything that has been left uncovered. This bed behind me is a great example of all three of those tactics. I've actually got a winter rye ground cover planted on this end. In the middle, you can see this is residue from, this was a lot of borage plants that I chopped up and put on the soil surface. And then at the end, I've got my leaf mulch. Another big part of garden cleanup, of course, is getting all of the non-organic materials out of the garden. So things like plant supports and garden signs and fencing and hoses and watering cans, basically anything that it would not be good to have it sit out in the weather all winter. Now I try to get those things cleaned out as soon as possible and put away in the barn. You'll see in a bit that I am embarrassingly behind on doing that task. The other thing that I try to get done is that anything that is growing on any kind of permanent supports, so a good example were the morning glory vines that I had on my garden fencing. I will chop those down and add them either to my beds or to my compost pile. All of my container plantings that had tender annuals in them get dumped this time of year also. Typically, I just empty that used potting soil into my beds and incorporate it with the existing soil. 
The only really big reason not to do this is if you suspect the presence of a soil pathogen, but personally I've never had an issue with this. And even though it is almost winter, there are still weeds. I try to yank any big obnoxious weeds, thistles, I'm looking at you, and any weeds I know are particularly tenacious or problematic before I put my beds to rest for the winter. Before the really yucky wet weather sets in, I try to get all of the seeds collected that I want to save. This year I focused on saving a lot of my runner beans as well as some of my flowers and herbs. And I usually wait till we have a relatively warm, sunny day and go out and harvest all of the seeds about midday or after all of the moisture from the dew has dried up. And then I let the seeds dry on trays in my greenhouse for another couple of weeks or until they are completely dry before putting them away in storage. Row covers are a big part of my gardening during November and December. In early December, I cover most of my crops with a heavyweight row cover in order to extend my harvest. And then typically at the end of December, sometimes even into January, depending on what the weather's doing, when I know that my harvest is completely done, I will pull all of those row covers, hang them up on my garden fencing to let them dry thoroughly, and then get them packed away in the barn for winter. Related to this, I am still doing a small amount of harvesting through November and December. It's been fairly cold here for the last month, but I've still got Brussels sprouts, broccoli, leafy greens like lettuce and kale and chard, and my root crops that I'm able to get out and harvest. I would have some really lovely cauliflower that would be ready to harvest about right now, but much to my disappointment when I pulled the row covers off the other day, I found that voles had made themselves at home under those nice snug little row covers and chewed my cauliflower heads right off to the stem. So next year I will be setting traps under my row covers. Now at the beginning of this video I did mention that there wasn't a whole lot going on in the way of planting, but there is one crop that I am planting in November and sometimes even into December depending on the weather, and that is garlic. Basically as long as my ground is not frozen solid, I can plant garlic here. So this year I did two separate plantings in November and I'm getting ready to do one in early December as well. And one of the very last things that I'm tackling because I'm putting this off because I hate doing it. This is my dirty little secret. This is what happens when I spend too much time in the garden, not enough time cleaning up after myself. This is my disaster of a barn. As you can see, there is barely room to move in here. Basically anything that I've taken out of the garden so far just gets thrown in here, any spot I can find. And I'm going to have to spend pretty much the entirety of December organizing, putting things away, taking care of this disaster before my husband, <laughs> before my husband absolutely loses his mind. Don't be like me. Put <laughs> Put your stuff away as you're taking it out of the garden because this is not something that anybody wants to deal with. Well, I've got to get back to work. I should clean the barn. What I'm going to do is put more leaf mulch on my beds, but I would love to hear from you. Where are you gardening and what are you doing in your garden right now? And if you enjoyed today's video, please consider subscribing to my channel, Growfully with Jenna. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.